Back in 1954, the Nautilus proved that submarines could stay at sea almost indefinitely thanks to nuclear power. But the Nautilus had limited firepower, torpedoes with conventional warheads. The US Navy wanted to go nuclear with their firepower as well as their engines. Their subs had to grow in size to accommodate these new weapons. In the 1950s, scientists on both sides of the Iron Curtain raced to build a rocket-powered atom bomb. And what better way of launching it than from a submarine? The idea of putting these things on a submarine was quite simple, that the submarines are very difficult to find and they are therefore a secure base from which to conduct a nuclear attack. The Russians were the first to do it. Their missile was so tall, the only place they could squeeze it in was behind the conning tower. To launch it, the submarine had to first surface and then hoist the missile above deck. But a submarine on the surface is an easy target for an enemy bomber. The Americans wanted to take this Soviet breakthrough a step further and build a submarine that could launch missiles without having to surface first. The problems facing the Americans were enormous. They were designing a submarine to launch these missiles from under the water. No one had ever fired a missile through the water before. Rocket engines need air to burn and won't work underwater. So the engineers considered using compressed air instead. So we have here a demonstration that Tristan's going to show us. Missile tube, compressed air, all we need is a missile. So I place the missile in the missile tube. Three, two, one, fire. Thank you very much. But that's not very representative, is it? Because clearly the submarine is going to be underwater, so the tube will be full of water. This is a much more realistic and representative setup, where we've got the missile in the tube on the whole rig underwater. So the missile has to not only get through the tube, but also has to overcome the depth of water and the pressure above it. So Tristan, let's see what happens. Ready? Three, two, one, fire. So, rather disappointing. So what's the solution? Here we've got an arrangement with the missile. It's sitting in a dry tube with a seal on top of it. The question is whether that creates enough momentum when the missile breaks through the seal, whether it can get through the water that sits on top of it. Tristan, let's see what happens. OK, ready to fire. Three, two, one. So clearly, that's the system that works. So the secret was a seal that prevented water flooding into the launch tube when the missile hatch opened. A moment before launch, the seal was blown apart. Before water had a chance to pour in, a valve opened, shooting a burst of compressed air into the bottom of the launch tube. The air forced the missile out of the tube at over 50 miles an hour. It had enough momentum to cut through almost 40 meters of water. in the air, its rockets were able to ignite. The USS George Washington, armed with 16 of these new Polaris missiles, took to the sea in 1960. 
Each missile was 40 times more powerful than the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima. And the George Washington could launch them whilst hidden beneath the waves from anywhere on Earth. A truly terrifying prospect. Missiles, like this one, carried in submarines, effectively prevented warfare by being so destructive, so frightening, that the concept of warfare between nations who owned them became unthinkable. Command Battle Stations Missile. Chief of Watch, sound general alarm. Sound general alarm, Mike. It's day 15 of the mission, and the captain runs the crew through a well-rehearsed exercise, launching a nuclear strike. The USS Pennsylvania carries 24 Trident nuclear missiles and is on constant readiness to respond to a message to launch them. Captain, we are in receipt of a valid emergency action message that directs the launch of target package 01. Request permission to authenticate. Authenticate the message. Authenticate the message, aye, sir. Golf, Oscar. The command to launch a nuclear missile is encoded with a cipher to ensure that the order has come directly from the president himself. Captain, the message is authentic. I concur. I concur. I concur. Authorized launch. Weapons con, you have permission to fire. I have permission to fire con weapons I. Five away. These missiles are so big, they need more than compressed air to get them through the water. The Pennsylvania uses a small rocket fired into a tank of water. The water superheats and instantly turns to steam. This column of steam propels the missile through the water into the air. The nuclear warheads on this submarine alone are more destructive than all the bombs dropped in both world wars combined. <laughs> 